woods at the shooting ground. It's actually minus seven, and uh, for good reason, Keith called this morning to say he wouldn't be coming. It's, it's beyond his threshold. So uh, with that in mind, I'm having to double gun today. So I brought my air arms to hit 200. Um, so hopefully bag some squirrels, and I've got my Lithgow LR22 um, for our egg friend if she turns up to pick up the bodies. So just done a quick zero check on the air arms. Generally just a case now of waiting for the squirrels to come and keep him warm. So hopefully I'll stick with it and I'll see you later on. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Well it was a very, very, very cold morning here in the UK. Minus seven as I left home. I'd had a message from Keith prior to leaving home saying that it had gone above his threshold and he couldn't even get into his van, the doors were frozen solid. So I was on my own. Um, with that in mind, I decided to take my Air Arms TX200 and my Lithgow LR22. So uh, double gunning in the hope that we'll get a couple of squirrels and maybe our red friend will come and pick them up. Straight into the action with the Air Arms TX200. A quick flash of light you might see from my trail camera just as he gets blatted. Uh, this thing happened so quick I wasn't even set up properly in the hide this morning. So that's him gone. Now you'll notice now that I just cock the gun and you don't see me put a pellet in. I came up with an idea this morning. Put a pellet in before you're under pressure and there's a squirrel there. So I've managed to do that without a glove on. Just put the pellet in the breech. Don't cock the gun fully and just release the uh, loading lever until you're ready to load uh, proper. So that's what I did this morning. Makes it a lot easier. There's no pressure to get that pellet in. You've got a lot more time. So give that a try if you've got an under lever rifle. It certainly made it easier for me this morning. So just lining up with this, it's light enough now not to use the illumination with the sight mark wraith. This was number two. Safety off. He's quite happy munching away. That's him gone for a Burton. So there's two down on the deck now and I actually go out and pick those up and move them away. I should have left them there for our fox friend. So I've now switched over to the Lithgow. It's still dark and I'm on now with the Hike Micro Alpex with no illumination. There's a fella that's just seen coming across the ground. He's going to go up that diagonal uh, piece of wood that we've left deliberately on the tree and then we'll join him on the feeder. So it's still quite dusky dark at the moment. That's why it's a bit grainy. So 44 grains of goodness going his way. Side on, mate. Oh, what a dive. So on with the second one. You notice now I've got two ladies that have joined me. That's the backdrop. It's an old advertising board from the shop. But when it gets light behind uh, that movement, you can be seen uh, through the camo netting behind me. So just a bit of a backdrop there. It will get eventually some black or brown paint sprayed on it as will the sides which are white so again with the 22 lr this is number four now that's him down for the burton so those two now fell quite nicely together to a bit more that. fox bait slumbering nicely The first one I shot, I put back underneath the feeder where that one's just dropped, just for the simple reason it, it's, it's if the fox comes, it's going to go to that right place where I've got a nice clear shot. Directly behind uh, where I'm firing is a huge bank of soil that was put here 40 years ago when the clay ground was built, and the banks there, um, primarily to stop the sound going back across over to the left where the village is so it, there's lots and lots of banks here so I know that there's nothing the other side of there um, it's absolutely dead ground so which is the main reason why we moved this this hide round to this place in the first place so uh, I must admit I didn't see him come in I was sending a message to a chap about another foxing job so it does pay to have an extra set of eyes in here 
Well, that's just come up to 11 o'clock now, and I've been here since about quarter to seven this morning. So uh, the first squirrel came in that I shot with the air arms. Um, a couple more came in after that that I pinged with the uh, 22 LR. So there's a nice heap of warm bait down there for our friend the fox. But um, as usual with nature, they don't always do what you want them to do. So she hasn't turned up. I would imagine it's because it's so cold, you, it's virtually impossible to creep around in this wood without making a noise because everything is so brittle and crunchy. So I'm just going to leave those squirrels there. Um, they're in view of the camera uh, and I'll have a look at the footage tomorrow and see um, what sort of time she does actually come and pick them up. So I just have to review the time that I'm going to sit here. It's just the fact that I like to get in here in the dark um, and unseen. It's always a problem coming in during daylight because you never know what's what's watching you. So um, there we go. That's just uh, the way it goes sometimes. It doesn't always happen to plan. But um, I always say to people that um, I can't promise results, but I can promise effort. So um, I'm sure the farmer will be pleased with the effort that uh, both Keith and I put in here. But I will come back and uh, sort this fox out once and for all. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next film. Well that was 16 in total now, Keith's been back there a couple of times this week and popped a few more off so please remember to click on the subscribe and notification bell if you've enjoyed this content and I'll see you on the next video soon. Cheerio!